When you're riding the subway in a city like New York, one of the things you're just bound to notice, besides how old everything is, is the express trains. Two trains going in the same direction from an island platform? Whoa! But if you're like a lot of people, you get home and you ride your local subway and you wonder, should my system have express trains? Maybe your city has a particularly busy transit line that you think would work better with some extra tracks. But is it really a good solution? Well, let's talk about it. Now, I need to give a bit of a mini explainer. New York has a lot of express trains, but they do not all work the same way. The simplest and most common form of express service in New York is the quad track express subway. One pair of tracks carries the express trains while another pair of tracks carries the local ones. Since both types of trains have their own dedicated tracks, they operate all the time. A level down from this are the fairly common triple track lines that usually exist as elevateds in the suburbs. Uh, these lines provide for peak direction express services. So during rush hour in the morning, you'll have express trains going into the city, and during rush hour in the evening, you'll have express trains leaving the city. The reality about these triple track express services is that they aren't a great value. You spend most of the money and use most of the space of a quad track express subway line, but you don't get nearly as much benefit since you can't operate express services in both directions most of the time. The last way you get express service in New York is with skip stop trains. These work by having some trains stop at some stations and some trains stop at others, with all trains stopping at major stations. This is a good approach, but it kind of depends on you having minor stations that you're willing to pass up during peak periods especially. And it is also a more complicated operation that plays a little less well with super high frequencies. Now, if this wasn't enough detail, I actually do have an in-depth explainer up here about express services, so go check that out if you're interested. The TLDR of this is that there are a lot of different ways you can do express trains. And New York, at least the version that people imagine, has the most expensive version of this. And probably the solution that people tend to imagine as the default best. To be clear, there are other options that you don't really see on the New York City subway, but they're even more operationally complicated. One approach can be writing a schedule that allows some trains to bypass some stations, as you see with the Copenhagen STOG. But this really relies on lower headways than I'd recommend for a metro, and again, requires really precise scheduling. Another option is passing loops, but again, passing loops require very precise scheduling. You actually have to have a train in the station so that you can bypass it, and they can require some pretty expensive infrastructure depending on where you're putting those passing loops. But you came here for the flashier infrastructure-based express services, quad tracks and all. So how easily can they be retrofitted? Well, let me answer your question with a question. How much demand does your corridor really have? The busyness matters in a big way. A big component to the benefit of the express trains in New York isn't even the express travel times, but the higher capacity by basically having two parallel subway lines on one corridor. You really don't even need to ever have the express trains interact with the locals, so you really are just getting two subway lines on one. And this is a pretty common trend. In many ways, the best way to justify an express line is to fill up a local line. That's the reason Japan, for example, created the Shinkansen bullet train, not just to provide higher speeds, but mainly to provide more capacity for intercity trips. And it's sort of what they're doing once again with the Chuo Shinkansen, the high-speed Magla. The nice thing is that once you have an express line, you can also make your local line a bit more local, add some infill stations and the like, and provide a service that's very tailored to local trips and very tailored to longer rapid transit ones. There is an issue though, at least on subways, retrofitting express tracks is hard. And if you're thinking about New York, it's even harder to justify adding two tracks to an existing popular subway line and then snarling it with intermingled trains and all kinds of operational headaches. At the same time, it's very difficult to actually construct such a system because you're most likely going to be putting your express tracks under your existing local tracks, and that means connecting them with ramps and other things. It's just very difficult. And at the same time, all of that requires interacting with a very busy existing transit line, which you could very well end up disrupting. It's just not great. Because of the technical challenge of expanding capacity on existing lines, never mention actually trying to add new underground express tracks, the more common approach you see is the express corridor alternative. This is also helpful because if you're forced to stay with the geometry of your original local line, you might not be able to hit the high speeds you want nearly as often. In Paris, this looks like line 14, which acts as an express alternative to the central section of line one. And line seven in Santiago, a city largely inspired by Paris with its metro, is following a similar model. 
Such lines tend to share some stations with the local alternative, but they can also diverge off to serve other corridors, both in between those shared stations and at the ends of the lines, trying to intercept riders who would otherwise be headed to the local line. And since you're building a fully separate line, there's probably an argument that it's both easier to construct since you're not gonna be building track connections and the like to your existing line, and at the same time, you get more redundancy than you would get with a quad track express service in terms of, oh, if there's a problem on one line, the other line can still be operating since it doesn't have shared tunnels with it. Now, if you're smart about the planning of a new express corridor, which will probably be deeper since older subways tend to be more shallow and we sadly don't really do cut and cover these days, what you can do is take advantage of the vertical difference between your local and express line to also traverse your horizontal distance. Basically, if you have your shallower line here and your deeper line here and you face the escalators the right way, people will travel both vertically and horizontally when using them and the connection should be quite seamless. There is a bit of an issue with all of this though. If your stop spacing on your existing line is quite wide, say around one kilometer on average, then you just aren't going to be saving a ton of time removing stations from your existing corridor, since there aren't all that many to begin with. Part of why express trains in New York and lines like Line 14 in Paris are so successful is that the local services in these cities are incredibly tightly packed. Stations are often only a couple hundred meters apart, multiple times more frequent than you see in most modern metro systems. A good example of this problem can be seen in London with the Central Line. You could build another tube line near it or add new express tracks, but it wouldn't speed things up all that much because the Central Line is already quite straight and it has wide gaps between its stations. So the Elizabeth Line, which serves as the express alternative to the Central Line, starts with trains and infrastructure capable of higher speeds, up to 100 kilometers per hour under London city center which when combined with much larger distances between stations allows much, much faster trip times and higher average speeds. In Toronto's case, a viewer comment about line one on Yonge Street did sort of inspire this video. You probably really would only put express service on the Young corridor since it is extremely high demand and the density honestly probably does justify it, even if only in the long term. And of course, you would probably want it to be operationally separate from the current Young line because that line moves roughly half a million people per day right now and you don't want to disrupt it while you're building your new parallel express service. In practice, this could look like a line that starts at Bay at Union Station, right at the current Line 1 station there, and then continues north to meet Line 1 again at a station just west of the Eden Center before diverging to the east to serve a station around College Street and Church Street, an area of the city that could definitely use more rapid transit, before heading back over to Bloor to meet Bloor Young and then traveling directly under Young Street, which the current Young subway actually doesn't, up north of Bloor and beyond. Since there are already stations at York Mills and Lawrence, I might actually suggest building a new station over at Avenue, which would still be possible on a faster corridor as long as you were opting for faster crossrail-esque trains. I do have another idea for this corridor and other corridors in North America that I think are actually a bit unique from corridors in other parts of the world, but that'll have to be the topic for a future video. Ultimately, the solution in most cases for express service is not to add express tracks, but to build a whole new express line. This gives you basically all of the benefits of the former, more capacity, higher speeds, without the downsides, like designing a new operations pattern and working near a critical current line, as well as needing to depend on intercompatible rolling stock, while also letting you serve whole new areas in some cases. Ultimately, I think when it comes to express service, people are a little too focused on the idea of express tracks where trains bypass other trains, when in reality, what people actually care about is average travel speed. And so a new corridor makes just as much sense as anything. Thanks for watching.